Hello everyone, this is Tony. Welcome back to Trophy Food Experiences. Today I'm doing a review of a dinner I had at Paul Bocuse Gastronomic Restaurant located near Lyon. So it's actually not in Lyon. It's, the address is 40 Beach Pier, 69660 Colon au d'Or. It's about 30 to 40 minutes uh, drive away from the center of uh, Lyon. And it is an iconic restaurant. Uh, Paul Bocuse came from Lyon and has trained virtually every top French chef um, out there. Uh, he passed away, I think, five years ago. And um, previous to that, they had the record for the longest streak for the um, longest tenure as a three-star Michelin restaurant. Once he passed away, unfortunately, they lost their star. So now they are a two-star Michelin restaurant. So um, you have to book probably eight to ten months in advance for a seat here so I was very excited about getting a reservation um, approach the building and you can see it's very iconic it's um, just uh, something to behold so it's it's a really special occasion you um, can dress up but I saw some people that are casual not casual like flip-flops and jeans but you know um, business casual uh, you I didn't not everyone had a suit on so um, you know it's it is a little bit formal, more formal than like a regular restaurant, but uh, it wasn't, uh, I didn't find it too formal. Couple of videos here, you see the courtyard before you get into the restaurant, some um, kind of uh, paintings, uh, artwork with Paul Bacuse, and then you see a window into the window with the chefs working away. At the front of the entrance, you see these uh, names. I'm not sure who they are. I think they are probably, it didn't look like really famous chefs to me, but I think probably they're just um, award winners that have come from the Balba Goose Academy. Um, but I didn't recognize any of the names. You get into the entrance and you're greeted right away with a view of the restaurant. It is formal in terms of its service standard. Um, it's um, one of the complaints that I have, have you'll see it across uh, when I get through my review is that um, they're not a lot of flexibility you kind of go by their schedule and again if you're this is a treat and it's a one uh, it's a lifetime experience I think you'll enjoy it uh, we were seated at the top uh, floor there was two floors I think the main floor is a little bit larger this is a smaller floor um, had about eight tables. This was a large table at the end of the room uh, for a larger group and um, again a very classic design. Um, this is our view from our table. Um, they only have one seating of um, the restaurant. We had the first uh, available time which is 8 p.m. I guess they eat a little bit later there and uh, you see some ornate decorations. It is um, yeah, one of these once in a lifetime experiences, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance. There's a lot of, um, you know, pageantry to everything. So in for that purpose, I mean, if you are actually not that much of a foodie and you don't do this all the time, I think it's really well worth it. Um, it is a splurge, as you'll see um, when we get to the cost of things. But, um, you know, it's a real experience. This is a shot I took as I left the restaurant at night, so the kitchen was winding down, we can see all the beautiful pans. It looks spick and span. All the bells and whistles, um, it's like a show. So really treat it like a show. If you're paying money for a, you know, a, a show that would be the right mindset. Quick video uh, with a view from our table. And then we'll move into the menu. It's kind of um, a huge, like 11 by 20 menu it's a huge menu but it's only two pages um, but the porter was really nice and he gave us a copy of the menu and like everything else in the restaurant is magnanimous it's um, huge it's over the top um, so uh, that was quite a nice touch this is the plate they put in front of you before the meal service and they take it away once they have um, the meal starts again a more pageantry it's Treat it like a show, and uh, for people that don't do this all the time, it is a magnificent experience. Um, it's like going to a Broadway show or to go to a high-end concert. It treat it like that, and um, you know you'll be wowed by everything and all the uh, formality. Um, but we'll talk about the food also. Now let's talk about the menu. So you can order a la carte, or else you can actually order uh, price fix menus. 
they have three different choices all the way up to 330 euro per person we chose the cheapest one which is 220 euro per person um, but what we found weird was that um, even though they only have one seating that I felt very rushed in the beginning of this so as an example we've got these amuse bushes in front of us I was I hadn't even looked at the wine list at this point um, so they plopped down the wine list book which is large but um, decent is I mean I've seen better and then five minutes later they ask you monsieur what wine do you, would you like without a lot of uh, discussion and care and so I actually wanted more than one wine and that also confused them quite a bit too um, so it was really rushed so rushed that I actually didn't have a chance to really listen to uh, what the person was selling to me they, they just came and you know you see even the second uh, mousse bouche I actually don't know what it was either because it was just so rushed it was one after another and I'd still not gotten even, I think I had not, either not chosen my wine or not gotten my wine. Or, or it was just very weird that it was so rushed. And we almost had to purposely slow down how fast we ate just to slow down the pace of things. So this is the second amuse-bouche that they give you. Um, I think it's a little consomme uh, with some cream in it. But again, I was like so kind of flustered. Um, with the whole situation with the wines and I don't think they expect people to order more than one wine so that was kind of a, an unusual so again this goes back to flexibility in terms of I think if you do things exactly the way they do it and the timing that they have then you're fine um, but um, that's more at 80s and 90s style of service nowadays um, people have a lot more choice and um, there's more flexibility and people eat more much more um, often in terms of high-end restaurants so it's not like a once in a lifetime occasion anymore it's kind of like once in a while so this is the first course which is the foie gras confit with a butter croissant and a citron noir uh, butter um, so both of these items were very good so the croissant was nice and buttery as it should be um, flaky and stuff like that the foie gras was um, rich and uh, very um, intense flavor but I actually didn't think they paired very well um, because it's almost like they were trying to show off the two things but they actually didn't they just put them together because they're both great um, I actually thought the, the regular bread they brought to the table matched the foie gras a lot better so um, and sorry to complain but I mean the croissant was really oily uh, so I guess maybe it's supposed to be buttery but it was really really uh, oily um, and dense so um, you know it was a good dish this is the main course which we shared you do have a choice of other things uh, you have a choice of two things for the set menu so this is their bar sauvage en croûte fouette with sauce charon so a fish baked in um, kind of phyllo pastry and then um, there's also quenelle inside of this too so it's a really it's, again it's a show it's um, served table side and you'll see in the next video it's really that's part of the, what you're paying for the show of it so here is a video showing them um, serving it table side um, really it's really amazing it's quite a nice part of the whole process when you go there again there's so many bells and whistles there's so much pageantry so that part of it is really um, great it's really grand I really enjoy that um, there's lots of places to take pictures and Instagrammable moments and videos um, so this is you know really quite nice and you'll see it goes through for a, maybe a minute or two so it's a whole uh, pomp and circumstance um, which is really adds to the experience um, as to the food um, the fish was good but um, did I have in my travels in France better fish dishes yes I did and so um, you know it was not bad it was good uh, it wasn't spectacular I would say um, but again you have to I guess account for the whole setting the ambiance the history you're paying for that uh, when you're going to uh, Paul Bocuse um, and again I think it's a throwback restaurant this in the 80s or 90s would have been a top-end restaurant but um, restaurants have evolved they've the service standards are better the quality of the food quality is better and whereas I think Paul Bocuse kind of does the same recipes and also gives the same type of service they like that 
um, I guess, rigidity. Um, but the world changes. And so, um, in my opinion, you do have to change a bit with that also. And um, it's no longer that as impressive because there are restaurants that are getting better and better. And whereas um, you're staying at the same standard that you were 30 years ago. So this is what it looks like on the plate. Again, beautiful plating. Um, fish was done nicely. Good dish. Um, definitely a Michelin um, starred dish. Um, would it be a three star Michelin restaurant dish? I don't think so. Um, it's not the most memorable fish dish I've ever had. Probably wouldn't even be in the top 10. Um, so um, it was good. It was a good dish. Uh, but um, not memorable, not somewhere where I would say, wow, I've got to come back to have this dish again. This is one of the wines I had. It's the Domaine Rion 2016 um, Chambon Musigny Premier Cru from Le Charme, a vineyard that I really enjoy. Um, about 300 euro um, a bottle. I didn't think that was overly um, expensive given it's high-end restaurant. They're, they're going to have to have their markup. I didn't think it was ridiculous. Um, they were very confused when I ordered a white wine and then I ordered two Burgundy wines, which I wanted to taste side by side. So I think that really confused them. Um, they were kind of almost wanted me to finish the first bottle before opening the second bottle. So again, that goes to the rigidity of service. Um, so anyways, it was good wine. And, um, you know, the Somali seemed a little bit... Um, inexperienced um, not much to say but could be that language was a barrier maybe her language she did say her language her English she wasn't comfortable in English so maybe that was part of it um, but it didn't really seem that she had a lot to say about the wines and um, to me with a like a two-star three-star Michelin restaurant you should have probably a pretty high-end sommelier who can really um, enhance the experience with their description of the wines this is the cheese course, and it's tremendous. Again, a lot of pageantry, and I got to try a lot of different cheeses. So they have a blue cheese, and they have some bread, and um, you'll see from the next photo, again, a much more bigger selection of cheeses. I also had a half bottle of Armand Rousseau, a Chevy Chabreton, and again, that confused them. When I ordered two bottles, and then said I wanted to drink them side by side, I don't think they kind of understood what I wanted. Um, the cheese cart, again, very impressive. Um, on the bottom, you have the harder cheeses. On the top, you have the goat or the um, softer cheeses. There were some Normandy cheeses. You could try as many as you wanted. Um, so it was really, that was, to me, a really great course. Um, again, pomp and circumstance, but that's not really cooking, quite frankly. There's no cooking involved here, but um, you know they have a great selection of cheeses, which is wonderful. Then they had their dessert cart, which is again, very, very impressive. You'll see they put it in front of you and both with the cheese and the dessert cart, they put it in front of you for five minutes so that you can kind of salivate over it. Really great design. You'll see um, there's five types here. There's a pistachio cake, a lemon tart, a strawberry, a chocolate, and then a meal fill. So this is a short video showing that selection. And a couple more pictures because it's so magnificent. Again, very um, for pleasing to the eye uh, for taking pictures. It looks spectacular. And so um, that part of it is like first rate. Um, definitely they do it better than I think anyone else that I've seen. But the dessert cart doesn't stop there. They still have another part of it, which they've got a cream cake with um, which they put praline on top. And um, Leon, that region, um, is famous for these um, pink praline. Uh, so they put that on top. And again, magnificent um, presentation. You can choose as many desserts as you like. So we chose five between um, two people. And again, everything was good, but um, have I had better meal fill before? Yeah. Have I had a better, better lemon tart, pistachio cake, chocolate cake? Yeah. So um, that's the problem here that um, there was not one dish that I thought in terms of the taste uh, profile was, wow, that is exceptional. Um, that really wowed me. The presentation wowed me, 
the whole pomp and circumstance wowed me. So I think from an experience perspective, I think it's a great experience. Um, but from a, my personal opinion in terms of a food experience, um, it's okay. Um, it's not bad food, of course, but it's, um, is it kind of wow in terms of the food itself? Um, to me, it isn't. This is the dish that I was talking about, the cake with some um, praline and also some dried pralines on top. Again, the presentation is magnificent. Taste is okay. It's, um, it's, uh, it's good, uh, but you know, it's, it's should be good at a two-star Michelin restaurant. So um, I thought the food was uh, decent um, and um, wasn't outstanding or um, did not uh, exceed my expectations, which are probably quite high already. So here is the last, um, they send you some petite fours. That's uh, done most by most restaurants these days. So in summary, on all in all, if you are not a foodie, in fact, I would say for sure go because it's treated, it's like a show. It's a, it's worth it. If you have the means, go and do this. It's going to cost you, um, you know, without wine minimum uh, almost 500 euros for a couple so it's going to be expensive but it's like a treat it like a show the pop and it's a once in a lifetime experience you'll love it as a foodie um the only reason i'm not recommending it because this is a food channel um honestly um from my perspective again i'm not a chef i'm not a, pers a, a critic it's just my own personal opinion it's the quality is probably of a one-star michelin restaurant um, so I don't think they'll lose their second star because that would be, um, too controversial and it's an iconic institution. You don't want to downgrade them any more than a second star, but I would be very surprised if they got back their third star. Um, the food quality and the service quality is not of that level. Um, probably not even of a second two star level, but, um, you know, they're iconic and they continue to roll on, um, and provide the same service they probably provided in the eighties. Um, so again, it's a good restaurant, don't get me wrong, but I cannot recommend just because for the price, you could probably have two or three meals at a one-star or two-star Michelin restaurant for the same price in Lyon, and Lyon has tons of great restaurants. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy eating.